How many of you are interested in learning Indian Sign Language? Raise your hands. Woo! Great. So, the kind of example and the kind of access I give you right now, for example, we have a deaf interpreter on stage standing next to me because I'm signing a mix of American Sign Language as well as Indian Sign Language. And my deaf interpreter there is signing ISL for the deaf Indians. And I too have two voice interpreters with me to give access so that you understand what I'm saying. And the topic is focusing on the misconceptions of accessibility for the deaf in India. Before I dig deep into my presentation, there'll be two points which I want to tell you about uh, our deaf community. You would know that society generally labels, and I want to know what kind of label would you give to people who do not hear or do not speak. You, have, you see these different options in front of you. I want you to raise your hand which, for the label which you agree that yes, this is the right label for a person who does not hear or does not speak. Are you ready? A, deaf and dumb, raise your hand if you agree. B, deaf and mute, raise your hand if you agree. C, hearing impaired. D, half or hard of hearing. E, deaf. Only a few hands. F, specially or differently abled. G, divyang. And H, speech and hearing impaired. Interesting. So the answer is deaf. All these labels, who have come up with these labels? Non-deaf people. We just have one word to define ourselves. That's D-E-A-F, one simple word. That's what we prefer to be called. And we request you. The fact is the media, the TV, you know, there's so much news about us. They, do, they ignore and they don't listen and they decide to call us what we actually don't like. So this is the kind of awareness we want to spread to you and let you know that we like to be called only as D-E-A-F, deaf. The second misconception is so since I moved to India, I have been working with various hearers, hearing individuals, hearing professionals in various fields. I have been chatting with various people about Indian Sign Language and I've heard their opinions and I want to tell you three misconceptions which I have found out from these people. I have been visiting many schools in India all over the country, deaf schools especially, meeting the teachers, the administrators, and they think sign language is not a true language. Indian sign language is just a way to support the deaf child to write or to speak. That's a major misconception. Out of 134 billion people, there are at least one crore deaf people in India. When hearing people see deaf people gesturing with their hands, their faces, their body, they think deaf people are acting like monkeys, you know. They think deaf people shouldn't stop signing because they're not monkeys. They should just speak instead. That is a misconception. The third misconception is the majority of hearing people in India, because of their hearing and their ability to speak and to communicate with their family in school, in their jobs, they're successful. But when they think there's a deaf person who cannot hear or speak, they think this person cannot succeed. That again is a major misconception. I want to inform you Indian Sign Language is an authentic and a natural language equivalent to written and spoken languages all over the country. I want to give you an example. There's a video where I'll show you that there are captions in this video at the same time the person is also signing. Let's see how equivalent it is. Yes, I consider myself an experienced driver taking a lot of tours and rides. The loud honking sounds may irritate hearing people, but it's not our problem. We cannot hear, which is an amazing advantage for us. We drive in peace and safety. Did you see this? Does he look like a monkey? It's a true language. So teachers, you know, you might think that sign language is not an authentic language. This is not right. And deaf people growing up naturally, you know, it's not necessary that they have to use spoken language. Deaf people can succeed in life without speaking while using sign language. Their only need for accessibility is sign language. Now we are ready to start talking about the various misconceptions 
where we think how to provide accessibility for the Indian deaf community. Now, I have been in the country since 2016, and the Rights of Persons with Disability Act was passed. Hearing people actually think that, yes, the law has been passed, accessibility is mil gayi inko, right? But the deaf people think that, no, it is not enough. We are not getting what is mandated. We are still missing out. And now I want to give you various examples of what we think is our need. India has 90% of parents who are hearing and their children are deaf. 90% of them are hearing parents. So their parents, you know, of course, sign language is not their first language. Now, can you imagine at home the child has no understanding? And there are two videos in front of you. I would like you to watch these two videos and tell us which clip the child understands better. Are we ready? At the same time, this video has, I mean, the parents are hearing and the child is deaf. Better. क्या बात करती रहती तुम सारा टाइम लड़के के साथ इतना प्रॉब्लम हो रहा है प्रिंसिपल मेरे को फोन करता रहता है अरे स्कूल में कुछ नहीं करता ये काम डाउन काम डाउन इतना चिल्ला क्या काम डाउन काम डाउन क्या काम डाउन क्या हुआ अरे यार तुम कुछ कुछ समझ नहीं आता कुछ नहीं समझ आता इसको मैं मैं समझाऊंगा इसको छोड़ो ये सब मुझे बात करने दो नेक्स्ट वीडियो अरे बहुत अच्छा है ना साइन लैंग्वेज बढ़िया है यस आई लर्न साइन लैंग्वेज इज वेरी गुड I'm told sign language works well, huh? अच्छा उसके साथ वहाँ पे चलें क्या? ये पूछ रहे हैं where are we going? Now see the first video which is on your left. The boy has a confusion on his face. He's not connected with his father. This is such a huge loss. There is no understanding. And the second video, you will see the parents, the mother especially, has taken an ISL course. She comes back home so that she, you know, you see the boy. He's happy. He's connected with his parents. But the father again is not that interested, but that's okay. But can you imagine all over the country, is this the kind of access or the other one? So deaf children have to have access at home. Now we'll give you three misconceptions which are related to schools and colleges. You see two pictures, one on your left, the other on your right. There's A on the left and B on the right. We want you to tell us which is the probable situation at this point of time in India. So how many of you think it's A, the one on your left? Please raise your hand. Mm -hmm. How many of you think it's B, the one on your right? All right, so, so. Anyways, the first picture on your left, you see the children? They have fear, they are in doubt, they are stressed, the teacher is hitting them, not allowing them to use sign language. The teacher herself doesn't know sign language, so she's hitting this child, telling them to, you have to speak. In the second picture, you see how the hearing children, they're happy, they're all hearing. But they're interested in learning Indian Sign Language, same as you raised your hand and said, I want to learn Indian Sign Language. Right? And the teacher who's teaching is deaf. So do you see the irony? Can you imagine a child who's deaf, his natural language, they are not being allowed, and people whose sign language would be the second or the third language, they are being encouraged to sign. This is a huge issue. This huge, hugely impacts their lifelong learning, their cognitive skills. First of all, language development doesn't happen. Their cognitive skills are delayed. Their literacy levels are hugely impacted because of this. So you have to remember all schools and universities must provide access through sign language in classrooms. Now, many schools in India, there are over 350 special schools in the country. There are two different methodologies which teachers use to teach and basically focus on language development. I want you to look at both the videos and think which is giving understanding and access to the child to develop language. I was reading a lot, I had a lot of work, and I didn't want to cheat. I didn't want to cheat and pass my exam. I tried, I tried, I learned everything. When the exam came, they were telling me to cheat, but I didn't want to cheat. I passed the exam, I wrote everything. I was hoping I'll get a job. I prayed to Ganesha, I prayed to Krishna. Do you see the difference? The first video, the kid, they're orating the same sounds, the same lift movements again and again and again. They don't understand the words, nor do they understand what they're speaking, and this is not true language. 
Jim, imagine the impact it has on their cognitive skills, their general knowledge. That is why their education, they're failing. They don't read, they can't write. On the other hand, the picture on your right, this child is naturally born to sign. And he's digging deep. He's telling his own story, how he passed in his exams, how he prayed. And all over India, 95% of the teachers do not use sign language. And these children, you know, they miss out maybe so many years. They miss out on language. They miss out on everything. The situation in India, the Indian government thinks inclusive education is magic, you know. It's going to be successful. It's going to solve the situation. It's going to, quality education can be provided. And, you know, it's going to be a safe place. We're going to save so much of money. I think it's a situation like a zoo, you know, when you have so many animals, there's a lion, there's an elephant, there may be a giraffe, monkeys, all of them in one classroom. Do you think this is possible? The teachers would be eaten by, this, the, by, by these animals, right? All these different animals, they, of course, you won't be, all of them won't be able to communicate within themselves. Will the teacher be able to match the lion, the giraffe, the monkey separately? On the other hand, you see the picture, all of them are lions. The teacher is also a lion. We are talking about the dynamic equilibrium of language within this classroom. Compare this to the schooling. When children in an inclusive classroom, this will not succeed. Why? The teacher is unable to sign. There are other students who do not know how to sign. Where is the attention? They would not be able to understand anything. There is no access to the medium of instruction. There's nothing. Now, if there's a teacher who's deaf, and if the students are deaf, same language, medium of instruction is same, there's access to all the instructions in the classroom, more general knowledge, more understanding. So the three misconceptions which we're telling you about in education, this is happening all over the country, and we have to allow these schools to start sign language because there can be only development of language and education. So that means all teachers must sign. We are talking about accessibility in media and television now. We'll show you these two videos. You have to identify which one provides access for the Indian deaf community. The second video. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So you see how the ball is coming and the batsman, you know, he takes a cut and there are three players right there. Ah, the three players, he's waiting for the point, for the point guy, you know. So two pictures, we have 500 matches which have already been won in India, and this is a great, great thing. In the first video, you see the newspaper reporters are speaking, but for the deaf community, this is not accessible. We won't understand. In the second video, there is a hearing reporter, and there is also a deaf reporter who's signing what is being said in ISL. This is the most effective model where India must give access in media and television. So that both languages and both the communities have access. This is the model and this is what we want in, in the country. All of you, I'm sure, have gone to the railway stations, listening to the announcements, change of platform, change of train, time of arrival, time of departure. You all have access and understanding, right? Let me show you the video. Thank you. Right. You understood everything, right? But for the deaf people who are in or, you know, going somewhere, they're always tense, they're always afraid, they're always in a state of worry because they're going to miss the train. Now, in Europe, in some countries, they're giving three-way access. One is a widget. You see the picture, there's a person who's signing. At the same time, there are captions. And the third, you see the speakerphone, all in one. So there are three-way communication that all people have access. So this is in the train, in the railway stations, at airports, all public places, access to all. Well, all of you are using smartphones, right? You download various kind of apps. You book your clothes, you book your uh, things, whatever you want to buy, you want food, you want taxi, everything is available on the apps. It's an amazing idea. But for us deaf, it's a major challenge. Why? The girl, she will show you what the challenge is. So I like to do online shopping via Amazon, via Mintra, via different apps. And I like to purchase stuff online. 
But where I face the challenge is after booking my product, the delivery guy gives me a call. However, I am a deaf person and I have to rely on a hearing person to take calls for me. So the access is missing here. Now this is what all deaf people experience every single day. Yes, there's one app called Uber which is giving a little bit of access. Now Uber has ready text messages which says I'm here, being right here, coming soon. So that's easy for the riders to send this message but at the same time there are challenges because all taxi drivers do not know English, right? They still call us. So is it possible for you to actually imagine how can we make these apps accessible that they don't have to call us? It's not necessary. Now we talk about accessibility in meetings, especially workplaces. The doctor's office, bank, police stations, government offices, because right now there are many deaf people who are working at various companies. But wherever they are, their boss, their co-workers, their colleagues, they're all discussing and unfortunately, there is no accessibility in the meetings. You will see both the pictures, they're not understanding nothing. You see the question marks on the head of two people? And the second picture, you see a light bulb in front of two people? Why? Because there's an interpreter standing next to the meet, the, miss to the boss. So they feel equal, they feel involved, they feel interactive, and this is where development of their career is happening. Because just imagine TEDx right now, we are talking about accessibility. Nowadays, technology, of course, is the buzzword, IT, ICT, their innovation is on a boom, right? There's so many solutions coming out from technology. So now you have your app, you speak into your phone and it becomes text, isn't it? Now do you remember I told you that deaf children when they grow up, they have missed 15 to 18 years of education. This doesn't match them because the second or third language fluency is not happening. At the same time, you see the third picture, all of you are thinking that interpreters can be removed and they can be some type of an avatar or some kind of a linguistic, uh, some type of a, of the, because sign language is a very, ling uh, you know, the paralinguistic aspects like the movements, the facial expressions, the body language, technology cannot take in all of this. And I see many groups, many people who are coming up with ideas, they forget to involve us. They don't involve these deaf people in the process. We are the people who are facing these challenges. Won't we know better? Hearing people won't have these challenges. How would you understand? It's a must for deaf people to be involved in these kind of innovations and creative processes. All these misconception misconceptions in schools, at workplaces, at important public places, now we're gonna show you a very short video. This is a video about a deaf person in Turkey and the community actually gave them a full access, a day of full access. So let's see how that looks like. Good morning. We've got hot bagels. I'd like to offer you an apple. Do you know him? Thank you. Bye. Hey, is he, is he, is he hearing bad? I don't know. He's signing. Oh, um, Sorry, my mistake. What's, what's going on? I don't know. Hi, Hello. welcome. No, welcome. Hi, hi. Yes, you see how the community is giving full access and he was wondering, he was so curious how everybody suddenly started signing. The shopkeeper, the fruit seller, the taxi driver. This is what we are talking about. This is full access. This is what we call inclusion, where hearing and the deaf people are together and the language is accessible. Are you interested in learning sign language? Yes? Are you ready to support us? So I want you to copy what I'm signing. I, put your fingers, Support, like that, Indian Sign Language. Let's do it again. I, pointing to yourself, support India, Indian Sign Language. Thank you so much.